Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Michigan Association for College and Mission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm going to go through a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. First, you can join the Q and uh, you can use the Q and A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and your microphone are off, so the panelists can't see or hear you. That being said, the only way to get your questions asked and answered is that Q&A button. I recommend using it throughout the entirety of our session today. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for more. And a reminder that this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Michigan. Again, that's strivescan.com slash Michigan. And without any further ado, I would like to turn it over to our presenters, starting first with Sterling College. Hey, how you doing today? Um, let's roll up to the top. My name is Jimmy Clark. I am the admission counselor at Sterling College. I'm Clinton. Um, Sterling College, I say the admission counselor because Sterling College is pretty unique in that we are an incredibly small, incredibly specific school. Um, so we are a four-year university. We're accredited through Nietzsche. So that's the same organization that credits all the colleges in the Northeast. Um, but we are um, very specific and very unique. So we're a college of around 120 students. We have four majors and all of them are focused around um, ecology and then the environment and sustainability. Um, we're really college that has one um, direct goal and that is to um, teach people the things they need to um, go on to save the world from a current climate crisis. Um, <clears throat> now each of our majors does this in a, in a pretty unique way. Um, but all of them have one thing in common, which is something called experiential learning. What that means at Sterling um, is that all of our classes have some sort of hands-on element. Um, and the amount that's hands-on differs class to class. So a lot of our, you know, our science, ecology, field ecology courses are about 50-50 time spent in the lab or the classroom versus time spent out in the field doing field ecology. Um, but then we have classes like, um, you know, like in the spring, we have a class for the first half of the semester your ice climbing and then the second half of the semester, your whitewater canoeing. Um, that's basically all out in the field, obviously, because there's not much about ice climbing you can learn sitting in the classroom. During COVID-19, we set up something called living and learning pods, which means that the same group of students you're living with in a dorm, all of our dorms have about 10 to 15 students in them. Um, and all of the rooms are singular double occupancy. Um, you, that group of students, the same students you're taking classes with. And that's the group you aren't expected to socially distance around. And then you are expected to socially distance around others. Um, we found it's a great way to make sure that you can, you know, have an actual college experience, um, also be safe and also learn in person. So it's worked well for us. We had one case of COVID in spring semester, zero in fall. Um, and the person on COVID in spring is totally fine and didn't spread to anyone. Um, Food is really important at Sterling. So as you'll find out, one of our majors is sustainable agriculture. Um, and a part of that is actually the fact that Sterling is a, is a working farm. So on our campus, we have a working farm. Um, so that farm provides about 50% of the food that we eat on campus. Um, and in addition to that sustainable agriculture major, the other part of that is sustainable food systems. So we actually make sure that about 98% of the food that we eat on campus comes from within 100 miles. Um, and that's really, you know, practicing what we preach in terms of, you know, making sure our food is sustainable and also is, uh, the systems that move it are sustainable. So yeah, this is our first major. And it really has two aspects. So one is learning about sustainable agriculture and the other is learning about those sustainable food systems. Um, people that do this major go on to do a lot of different stuff. Some actually open up their own farms. Some people um, go to work for state or federal governments. Some people go on to graduate school. So there's a lot of different paths forward with this major. It's a pretty, there's a lot of different work in this field. Um, environmental humanities is another major of ours. Um, the focuses in this major are on things like um, environmental literature. It's on environmental justice. So you'll learn how to protest, how to form groups. Um, we have um, in-depth classes on art, history, writing, philosophy, storytelling. Um, and two of our bigger hands-on um, things are woodworking and then also fiber arts. Um, so you'll learn how to shear the sheep and then learn how to turn that wool into art. Um, 
we also, our third major is ecology. Um, and so the ecology major is really focused on um, field ecology. So learning how to go out in the field, how to take soil samples, water samples, learning what a healthy ecology looks like, so learning what a healthy forest looks like, learning what a healthy river looks like. Um, a lot of people in this major go on to graduate school and then they work for, um, they either go on to graduate school and then work for universities or the federal or state governments, or they go on straight from here to work for um, smaller organizations that are doing ecological work around the world. Um, our final major is outdoor education. Um, so this major is focused around two aspects. So one is those outdoor skills that I talked about before, for example, ice climbing. Um, and things like whitewater canoeing, rock climbing, all those things you need to go on the field for. Um, and then the other half is education. So you'll learn how to um, design courses, you'll learn about conflict resolution, you'll learn about a lot of different stuff. Um, and those two aspects allow the people who graduate with this major to go on to, um, they can you know, lead field expeditions out west, they can um, run summer camps anywhere in the country, they'll be running um, shorter field expeditions in the northeast. Um, so it's really one where you learn you learn how to you know be successful outdoors and also learn how to be that sort of that educator who is outdoors. <coughs> Sterling is unique and then we have a global field studies program where if you come here for four years, you'll probably go on two or three trips um, that are two weeks long, no additional cost for going on these trips um, that are basically anywhere in the Americas and focused around a major. So it can be something like a, uh, there's a food systems trip where they go to the mountains of Peru and study how they get food up to these really remote mountain towns. And there's a lot more basically around all of the Americas. Um, we're also a work college. That basically means our college is very cheap. Um, so thanks. Um, if you want to reach out to me, my email is jclark at sterncollege.edu. And just by attending this event, you've already received a $500 scholarship if you decide to attend Sterling. Uh, thanks, hope to talk to you soon. Great, thank you so much. And next we will hear from St. John's College. Oh, thank you. Great. All right, well, I'm excited to be here with you guys today. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is a little, a little hoarse today, but I uh, hope I can stay there with you. Um, so I am, my name is Natalie and I'm from St. John's College. So I'm gonna use one of my six minutes to kind of do a quick test. Uh, if you're watching this, if you're listening, um, look through this list and see if any of these items that you identify with or that you would consider descriptive of yourself. Do you do mock trial or do you consider yourself, you know, a divergent thinker? Um, are you one of those students who really likes to ask questions? <clears throat> if you've answered yes to two or more of those things, I would invite you to really listen and pay attention because you might be a Johnny. Um, a little bit like Sterling, I'm usually the smallest college in the room, but we're a little larger than Sterling. Um, St. John's College is one college with two campuses. We do have um, we do have two fantastic campuses, each of which have about 400 students. So we're still teeny, teeny, tiny on the scale of universities and colleges. Um, and we do, are, we're sort of known for our great books approach. We study essentially 3,000 years of human thought across seven disciplines. We have the campus in Santa Fe, New Mexico, which is at the southern tip of the Rocky Mountains. Beautiful, four seasons, 7,000 feet elevation, lots of outdoor activities that students can take advantage of. Our second campus is in Annapolis, Maryland, which was on Jeopardy a few weeks ago as the third oldest college campus in the United States. So right in the historic district of Annapolis across from the Naval Academy, um, it's a really lovely brick and ivy kind of location. So St. John's is known for inquiry-based approach. Um, all of our classes are done in the Socratic seminar style. There are no lecture halls at St. John's and every class has around 14 to 19 students. There are no classes larger than 21 students. We do have a faculty to student ratio of one faculty to seven students. So you really, it's an intimate setting. It's an intimate community of learners um, inside and outside the classroom. So this is a little bit, you're essentially getting a very deep foundation across these disciplines in history, philosophy, literature, law, mathematics, and science as well. 
So just a little bit about student life uh, in, a, in a college this size, I think it's exciting because there are tons of opportunities or existing opportunities, um, but there are also ways to start your own clubs and organizations. So you have support to do that, or you can just simply join, you know, one of the many things like student government or small chorus or the theater group. So lots of choices, very active student life. So a little bit about what others are saying about us. If this is the first time you're hearing about St. John's, I'd like to kind of give some context. Um, so Forbes magazine did call us the most rigorous college in America. We're pretty proud of that. Uh, Princeton Review and US News and World Report also ranks us very high for our faculty and for our students. So then the question might be, okay, if everyone graduates with a Bachelor of Arts and Liberal Arts, what do you do with a St. John's degree? And really the answer is just about anything. Um, it is a fantastic preparation for law school. Our students do score on average in the 92nd percentile on things like the LSAT and the GRE. So graduate schools, internships, fellowships, job shadowing. So in addition to the sort of fantastic kind of philosophically minded curriculum, you also get supported individually as a student, even starting from freshman year. This is just a very small sample of where some of our graduates have gone on to work um, either directly from St. John's or, you know, after a graduate program. We have Johnny's and NASA at the Huffington Post, at Stanford, at the Atlantic Records, Deloitte, which is a business um, organization. So really, um, we're very much of the case that with a St. John's degree, with a liberal arts education, you can go anywhere. So quickly about admissions and financial aid, we, there are several ways to apply. Um, we look at everything. We look at your letters of rec, we look at your transcripts, we read your transcripts in context, but we also really want to understand who you are as a thinker. So we ask you to write a supplemental essay. That is very important for us. We have fantastic financial aid as well as merit-based scholarships for a few. Um, nearly 85% of our students are on financial aid. Um, we have a very individualized process, but it does start with completing the FAFSA. So you're probably doing that for all your other schools. That's the only thing you need to do for St. John's. This is a departing shot of our, uh, this is about five blocks away from the Annapolis campus. This is the docks uh, for downtown Annapolis. So a great little walk, coffee shops and everything. And this is one of my favorite locations on our Santa Fe campus, um, right on the hills. This is about a five minute walk up from actually my office and from the student center. So lovely place to sort of contemplate some big ideas. Uh, students are actually accepted to both campuses, so you can spend time on the East Coast and in the Southwest. So if you're admitted to one campus, you're also admitted to the other. And, you know, students love to take advantage of that. So it's a great opportunity, super easy to do for a year or so. So it is, as I mentioned before, a highly specific also an individual, uh, you know, institution. So I would welcome anyone who's interested to email me or call me. I'm happy to talk with you over the phone or Zoom or text or email. Um, we are really excited about students for whom this is a good fit. So thank you. Great. Thank you so much. And next we will hear from Cleveland State University. I think you might be muted if, if... Yeah, sorry. I was trying to figure <laughs> out those controls, but we should no. be all good now. Um, but hello, everyone. My name is Rachel Klatcha, and I am the admissions counselor at Cleveland State University for the entire state of Michigan. Um, thank you so much for attending tonight's event, and I'm just going to give you a general overview about CSU. Um, so here at Cleveland State, we are a mid-sized university. Uh, we have about 16,000 students here on our campus, um, which I realize seems like a lot, but I really do think it provides our students with the best of both worlds um, and allows our students to enjoy that bigger, more exciting campus atmosphere with lots of involvement opportunities. Uh, but then we're still able to provide our students with individualized education experiences in their, class, in their classes as well. Um, so our average class size is still about 23 students. Excuse me, this allows our students to get connected with the professors and use them as a resource while they're going through their classes here at CSU. 
Um, we have over 175 different majors and programs across seven academic colleges, um, from engineering to uh, nursing and health sciences, to business, to urban affairs, uh, to our College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences and education as well. So just to kind of give you an idea of what majors we offer here, uh, we have over 200 organizations on our campus as well as 18 NCAA Division I sports teams. Um, so at a glance, it's easy to see that there's a lot going on here at CSU. Um, and we're able to offer all these wonderful opportunities on our campus, which is located right in the heart of downtown Cleveland in Ohio. Um, so we're in Northeast Ohio. We're about two and a half, three hours away from Detroit to give you an idea of where we're located. And um, our students really love being able to take advantage of both campus life and city life all in one. So um, with having an urban environment, we're surrounded by different Fortune 500 companies and nonprofits, and this provides our students with additional opportunities to uh, benefit professionally from our location by uh, being able to take advantage of engaged learning and different internship and co-op opportunities, um, allowing our students to get some real world experience before graduation at some organizations, including Cleveland Clinic, Metro Health and University Hospitals, um, NASA, um, and Key Bank, Progressive Insurance, just to name a few. So lots of opportunities to get that hands-on learning before graduation. Um, and then in addition to our professional advantages, being on a college campus in downtown Cleveland is honestly just a really uh, fun experience that our students seem to enjoy while going through their courses here. Um, you're just steps away from world-class entertainment and different restaurants and attractions here. Playhouse Square, which is actually on our campus, is the second largest theater district in the country. So we have touring groups from Off-Broadway that come perform here, as well as our own CSU theater and dance students. Um, we're also near the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the Cleveland Museum of Art. Uh, we have three major league sports teams here in our city. So if you're a sports fan, it's really easy to go check out a game. And we're also near the Metro Parks and the Lake uh, and Lake Erie. So um, if you're interested in staying active outdoors, there's lots of opportunities for that too. And since we are in a bigger city, we have larger events come to our campus all the time um, and this essentially and to the city and essentially coming to our campus too for our students. Um, so we're able to connect our students to some of these bigger events through an organization on our campus that gets discounted or free tickets to these things. Uh, for example, a couple summers ago, um, Justin Timberlake was here for a concert and they were able to get tickets for like $15 or so. So um, it's really great that some of these bigger events in our city are uh, our students are able to take advantage of. And then we have over 200 organizations here on our campus, anything from service activities to fraternity and sorority life. If you're looking for something more social, we have professional organizations as well as club sports. Um, so lots of things to stay involved with and enjoy for fun outside of your classes here. And our students are able to take advantage of all of these wonderful opportunities at an affordable rate. We do have one of the lowest tuition rates in the state of Ohio, which is something we're very proud about. And we're also able to pair it with our CSU guarantee. Uh, so this means when a student's starting at Cleveland State, that tuition rate for their full year, um, first freshman year, locks in and it won't increase over the four years or eight semesters it takes for students to graduate and complete their degrees. So this is an excellent planning tool for our students and their families. We also have a lot of scholarship opportunities available for our students. Um, if students uh, apply by March 1st of their senior year, they are automatically considered for our merit-based scholarships. And these range up to $34,000 in total for our students in Michigan. Um, and there's also another uh, um, opportunity for scholarship through, through our Honors College. Um, if students apply by January 15th, they will be considered for our um, Honors Scholarship, which is equal the amount of full in-state tuition and fees for all four years. An additional, uh, I guess, scholarship opportunity that we offer for our students starting in the fall 2021 semester is our uh, two for one promise. Uh, so any students starting this fall, if they maintain at least a 3.0 GPA for that semester, uh, will have their spring semester covered by CSU uh, for spring of 2022 um, after scholarships are applied. So a really exciting scholarship opportunity that we're able to offer our students this year. And just to kind of talk a little bit about our application process that opens August 1st of your senior year we're on our, our applications on our website and on the Common App. Um, once that's filled out, we just require an official copy of your high school transcripts as well as your ACT or SAT test scores uh, to be submitted. Um, there's typically a $40 application fee included with that as well. Um, but feel free to reach out to me if you have questions about fee waivers and things like that. Um, and just to kind of give you an idea of that process, 
And then here are some opportunities for you to visit our campus to learn more. So right now we have in-person and virtual events going on. Um, we have in-person campus tours that are safely socially distanced, um, virtual info sessions, campus tours, different webinars. And then you can always sign up for an appointment to meet with me virtually as well if you have specific questions. So here's my contact information. If you have questions after today, feel free to reach out um, and also let me know in the chat if you have questions today too. Uh, but thank you so much. Great, thank you. Next, we were supposed to hear from Lords University. They're not here at the moment. So we're gonna skip over them and hear uh, instead from Drexel University. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon to learn a little bit more about the universities that are present today. My name is Emily Santana. I'm one of the assistant directors of undergraduate admissions here at Drexel University. I will apologize um, right now if you hear my dogs barking in the background. They're very quiet usually. Um, but to get started here at Drexel University, we are a comprehensive research university and experiential learning leader. And we're located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Drexel was founded in 1891 by a man named Anthony J. Drexel, who was local banker and philanthropist in the Philadelphia area. And he wanted to create a university where students, no matter their socioeconomic background, race or gender, had the ability to come and get a hands-on experience. So he created what was once Drexel Institute, now Drexel University. Here at Drexel, we're home to about 14,500 undergraduate students. And while that might sound like a large undergraduate population, at any given time, half of our student population is away on co-op. So because of that, we're able to keep our median class size to 19 students and have a student to faculty ratio of 11 to one. We have over 80 different majors for students to choose from here at Drexel University and over 100 different minors as well. Our students are coming from about 44 different states and 122 different countries, so you're going to be exposed to a diverse group of uh, students here on campus, as well as a diverse faculty staff um, to provide you a well-rounded education at Drexel. At Drexel, all of our majors are housed within one of these 13 colleges or schools that you see listed on the screen. At Drexel, you're going to apply directly into your major of choice. So if you're interested in studying communications, you'd apply directly into our communications major within our College of Arts and Science. If you're interested in studying business, but you're not sure exactly what field of business you want to go into just yet, you can apply as an undeclared business student in our Lebeau wow. College of Business. One of the great things about Drexel is most of our colleges and schools do offer an undeclared option within that track for students who are not sure exactly what they want to just study just yet. We also have a BSMD program for students who are interested in going on to medical school, as well as a, BS, um, a BSJD program for students who are interested in going on to law school. And then 18 other accelerated and combined degree programs are available for students as well as incoming first year students. At Drexel, what we're really known for is our cooperative education program. Our co-op program is the largest of its kind. We've been doing co-op at Drexel for over 100 years now. We partner with about 15, uh, 1,500 different companies in 39 states and 40 different countries. About 96% of our students at Drexel will complete a co-op in their time, and 80% of our co-op positions are paid. Students have the ability to complete anywhere between six months to 18 months of full-time work experience in their field before they graduate from the university that they can list as work experience on their resume. So essentially you have the ability to test drive your career before you even graduate from the university through our co-op program. Um, and then the median salary for students who do co-op um, is about 18,000 in six months. So it's a great opportunity for students to get hands-on experience and earn a little money. And like I said, 80% of our co-op positions are paid and you'll get assistance through co-op, through our co-op advisors um, in our Steinbright Career Development Center. At Drexel, we are a quarter school um, in terms of our curriculum. So our quarters are 10 weeks long and they follow the seasons in terms of academic quarters. We offer two curriculums to accommodate students' co-ops. Um, we offer a four-year curriculum where students will complete one six-month-long co-op in their third year. We also offer a five-year curriculum where students will complete 18 months of full-time work experience through three, through three six-month-long uh, co-ops starting in their second year. Whether you're on a four-year or a five-year curriculum, you're going to be charged the same amount because you're only taking um, you only charge tuition while you're taking classes. So whether you do a four-year curriculum or a five-year curriculum, um, that's 12 academic quarters in the classroom. The biggest difference between the two is just the amount of time you'll graduate with work experience. 
Here at Drexel, we're located in what is considered University City. University City is a subsection of the, of the city of Philadelphia. It's home to about 40,000 college students between three universities, Drexel included. Um, we are also a division one school in terms of athletics here at Drexel. We have 350 other student organizations for students to get involved in, 30 sororities and fraternities, as well as club and intramural sports. We have an honors program for students at the university. And then we also have learning living communities where students are able to live and learn with other students within their college. We're also a very civically engaged university. Students have the ability to do civic engagement and volunteer in the local city of Philadelphia. So just talking to you all about a complete application process here at Drexel. Um, you can submit the Common App or the Coalition App, whichever one you're comfortable with using to apply to the university. Submit your application fee, or if you have an application fee waiver, you can also submit that as well. Submit high school transcripts or college transcripts to be considered for um, college credits. And we also take AP and IB scores as well. Complete a personal essay through the Common App or the Coalition App. Provide two letters of recommendation. And if you're applying to any of our specialty programs, such as our BSMD program, our honors program, or any of our majors within the West Falls College of Media Arts and Design, you will have supplemental application materials. If you're a transfer student, we do have transfer requirements and you can find a complete list of that on our website. We are a test optional school for the fall of 2022 and the fall of 2023. So any juniors and sophomores in the room, um, you do not have to take the SATs or the ACTs to apply to Drexel. You will still be considered for merit-based aid at the university. Here are our application deadlines. So um, if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to me. And then here is my contact information as well. If you have any questions about Drexel, um, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you all for joining me this afternoon to learn a little bit more about Drexel. Great, thank you so much. And next we will hear from Penn State University. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Anna Fernandez and I am the admissions counselor for Penn State uh, for your area. I'm very excited to tell you all about all the benefits of a Penn State education. Um, so some things first, Penn State was usually ranked in the top 1% of the best universities in the world by the Center for World University Rankings, uh, not only for the quality of education that students are going to receive, but also all the research opportunities available to students. Uh, Penn State is also a has a top ranked career service office that provides students with resume workshops, mock interviews, and even professional headshots. Um, this office also hosts the largest career fair, East 7 Mississippi, every fall and every spring, where students have access to over 4,500 um, employers, including most of the Fortune 500 companies who come specifically to Penn State Career Fair um, to record, uh, recruit Penn Staters. Um, these next two numbers are numbers that we're extremely proud of here at Penn State. Um, we have an 85% graduation rate and we have a 93% uh, retention rate. Um, it's a study abroad is something that you've been thinking about. Um, Penn State is a great supporter of this program with thousands of students participating in it every year. We have um, over 300 uh, programs in over 54 countries um, and many options that students can fit into any program. So uh, it can be as short as a week or as long as a year and any time in between once it can be a semester or even um, during your summer. Uh, Penn State is also a research one um, institution, which means we get significant funding to do research um, over a billion dollars annually, um, which means that you have plenty of opportunity to do um, research here at Penn State, especially during your first year. Um, you can start doing research, which is really important. You don't have to wait into your junior and senior year to start learning um, or having those important experiences. And even though Penn State is a large institution and you will have some of those large stadium size uh, sitting classes at the beginning, um, the, the student to faculty ratio does tend to go down to about 16 to one um, as soon as students get to uh, closer to their ma intended major. Now Penn State is unique in that we're part of a 20 campus system. And these campuses can be as small as 800 students or as large as, large as 46,000 students which is our University Park campus. And they can be rural, small, or urban. Um, all of our campuses offer their own four-year degree should students wanna stay at just one campus, or students can take advan advantage of Penn State's unique two plus two plan, where students can start at a campus for the first two years and then transition over and finish their degree 
um, for their last two years. Now, all of these campuses are all Penn State. So wherever you start and wherever you finish, um, it's gonna be one transcript, one degree and one university. You'll notice some campuses have some little monopoly houses um, that represents uh, campuses that offer on-campus housing um, for students. The ones without a house, it just means there is going to be housing, it's just going to be um, near the university and it's just not going to be a uh, university owned. Uh, Penn State has over 275 majors and 185 minors in 13 academic colleges. Um, we also have uh, for undecided students what we call the Division of Undergraduate Studies, um, where students work closely with their academic advisor, helping them narrow down their interests until they finally choose a major at the end of their second year. Um, our most popular colleges are the College of Business, our College of Nursing, Engineering, and Science. Um, we encourage students to get involved outside of the classroom and join one of our more uh, one of our over 1,200 clubs and organizations that we have here, um, university-wide at Penn State. Um, so if sports is your thing, uh, we have intramural sports, club teams. We're also a Division I Big Ten University, so football is a big deal here. Um, in the fall, we have a student-run a newspaper, um, the world's largest uh, student-run philanthropy who write that raises um, uh, money for pediatric cancer every year. And we also have over 58 uh, religious organizations that you can be part of. And the great thing here is that if you can't find something to, to be part of, you can always create your own club organization here at Penn State. All you need are 10 interested students and a faculty member to sponsor you and you can create your own club. Now the ranges here in this chart represent the middle 50% of students who are offered admission uh, for the fall 2020, there are not cutoffs or averages. Uh, so placing in the upper end of both of these ranges is going to increase your likelihood of being offered your first choice campus and or major. Um, in your application, you will be asked to choose your first choice and your second choice uh, campus because we have 20 to choose from and they're all Penn State. Um, the most important piece of the review is going to be um, your academic record, so your GPA and the rigor of your curriculum. Um, we also take a look at the many roles you serve as a student, a sibling, athlete, um, employee, volunteer, um, et cetera. Uh, this is our admissions timeline. Our application opens on August 1st. November 1st is our early action deadline and your best chance at admissions to your first choice campus. Um, it also means you'll receive a non-binding decision by December 24th. Um, if you're interested in receiving financial aid, we recommend that you have that you fill out your FAFSA by December 1st. Uh, at, at Penn State, all students are reviewed for any type of scholarship opportunity with their application. There's nothing additional that students need to do. Uh, to help you estimate your cost of attendance, here are the tuition numbers uh, for both our largest campus, University Park, and our 19 other campuses. And these numbers include tuition, room, and board. Um, this is the end of my presentation. On the screen, you'll find our social media pages as well as my contact information. My name is Anna Fernandez. Um, please reach out to me anytime. I am here to help you with the admissions process. Um, my email is hfernandez at, at psu.edu. Um, I'll put my contact information in the chat and please contact me should you have any additional questions or anytime throughout the admissions process. Thank you for uh, coming today and letting, letting me tell you all about uh, Penn State. All right, thank you. So unfortunately, it looks like Lord's University is not here yet, uh, is not here. So we're gonna move on to our Q&A segment. So at this time, I'd invite all of our attendees if they are comfortable doing so to turn their cams back on. And I'm just gonna pose a couple questions to give our reps here another opportunity to chat, talk about their school, and just talk about the, the college search process in general. Um, each school will have about 20, 30 seconds to respond, um, and we will start right up at the top. So our first question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So again, we'll start up at the top with Sterling College. All righty. We might not be there just now. So we'll skip over them and, and start with uh, St. John's College instead. Um, well, my, I have we all have lots of advice. Um, my favorite advice is to uh, not be shy and to, whether you're looking at a big university or small college, um, 
don't be afraid to email us. Uh, we are all here to work with students and I think you know, most of us welcome it. So we're excited to have you reach out to us. Um, and then often it just helps us a lot, um, but we, you know, text, email, um, phone, even pick up a phone, give us a call. Um, but I think it's a really good thing, especially if you're a junior or sophomore and you're just kind of looking also as the world opens up, I think we would, as, and as colleges open up, um, you know, getting to sort of tour places, I think is really helpful too. Great. Uh, next, Cleveland State University. Yeah, I definitely agree with everything Natalie said. Um, another piece of advice that I'd like to offer to you guys is when you're going through the application process, once senior year, year hits, I definitely recommend applying sooner rather than later. Um, even if you're unsure, um, this will honestly just make you, um, I guess, in the perfect spot to um, be considered for all the scholarships that are out there for any of our institutions. So I definitely recommend doing that. And uh, to piggyback, piggyback off Natalie, reach out to your admissions counselor too about no matter what questions you have, but about scholarships too. Like we're happy to help you with that, um, have lots of knowledge on that. So please reach out to us uh, regarding scholarships. Great, uh, Drexel University. So I usually always recommend for students to reach out to admissions counselors. So Natalie stole that one for me. But I also recommend to make sure that you create a professional email for when you're applying to colleges that are that is specifically um, for your college admissions process, something that's professional, typically first name, last name, um, and then some numbers, obviously, because at this point, I feel like all email addresses are taken if you have a very common first name and last name. Um, and make sure that you're checking your email all the time. You're going to get a lot of information from colleges. So making sure that you have a separate dedicated email for the college search process is very important and make sure you're paying attention to deadlines. We're gonna send you multiple <laughs> reminders when deadlines are coming up, whether it's for your application for additional scholarships for CSS profiles, um, whatever it may be. So make sure you're looking at those emails and paying attention to deadlines because those are really beneficial. And if you miss it, there's really nothing we can't can do because we've let you know and we notified you a lot at that point. Great, and lastly, Penn State University. Well, what's there more to say? I think um, Rachel, Natalie, and Emily have pretty much covered it all. Um, I, I would just say, you know, do your research on, on your universities as well. Um, visit the campus, it's really important. You might think that you really wanna go to a university and you get there and it just doesn't quite feel right. Um, so I think visiting uh, the, the, the campus can really make a difference between how you feel and whether you really want to be there or not. Um, so wanting to go to, to that college your whole life and actually being there um, can really make a big difference. So um, I strongly suggest um, if you can um, to take that trip, uh, make it a family trip and go out there and, and make, make that visit. It can make a huge difference in your, in your decision making. Great. All excellent pieces of advice there. Next, we have what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Um, it looks like Sterling College uh, left, so we'll start with St. John, St. John's College. So um, my favorite, my favorite tradition. We have a lot of them. Yeah, there's two. I can't pick one. Sorry, um, but quickly. Um, the sophomores throw the seniors a big party at the end of every year. So the seniors first do a, a big skit. Um, about three weeks, four weeks before graduation. No one knows when it's gonna happen. Um, and so then they do a big thing. And then the week following the sophomores, um, so two weeks before graduation sometime, the sophomores throw like a two day kind of community festival party event for the seniors to kind of say goodbye and thank you. And then the Annapolis campus is famous for its croquet match. Unfortunately, we're not able to have that this year, but every April around this time, in fact, this is usually the third week in April, there is an annual croquet match between the St. John's and the Naval Academy. So it's a really fun event. Awesome. Next, Cleveland State University. You know, one of the favorite events for our students is our annual glow party. I know that's something that we had to miss out on this year, um, but basically our students, uh, we have a campus activities board that plans a lot of events. Um, they turn our whole student center into this glow in the dark dance party. Um, there's also video games, free food. Um, it's lots of fun. Our students really enjoy it. And um, in the past, before all this pandemic stuff happened, uh, we would also be able to host admissions events for students to sleep over and get kind of a taste for what student life is like. 
here at CSU. So hopefully we'll be able to continue doing that in the future, but definitely one of um, our students' favorite events here. Awesome. Uh, Drexel University? So I actually have two. So here at Drexel, we're not a football school, we are a basketball school. So our traditional homecoming is in January, late January, um, during basketball season. So it's really fun for the students to welcome back to the winter quarter. Um, we do homecoming kickoff. Um, it's really a great time for the students. And then for our graduating students, our graduation is actually yeah. held at a major league baseball park. Um, so this is Bank Park, which is home to the Philadelphia Phillies. Um, so it's a great time. Um, they do fireworks shows, so not many people can say that they've actually graduated at a major league baseball park. Um, and then the city turns blue and gold for our Drexel Dragons. So I'm excited because I'm actually a Drexel alum. I graduated June of 2020, so I can't wait to walk this year um, since I didn't get to walk last year. Um, so that'll be really exciting for all of our grads. We're going to be doing 2020 and 2021 this year, so it'll be a nice big fun event safely, of course. Oh, that sounds like a whole lot of fun, yeah. Emily. <laughs> um, so at Penn State, like I, I talked about earlier, we're a big football school uh, or Big Ten. We're in the Big Ten Conference. Um, so we have a, a lot of rivals um, when it comes to football. Um, so when the one of the biggest rivals come in the fall, um, we have what is called the big whiteout game. It's always a night game. Um, the whole stadium uh, dresses in white. Um, all the alumni come into town. Um, the, the city or the little town doubles in size. Um, it gets so loud um, in the stadium. I mean, it, the atmosphere is just so amazing. The spirit is, you know, over the top. Um, and it's just one of the best nights, not only of just football, but just being in town and just the spirit and the energy that's just around. Um, that, that would be the best tradition here at, at Penn State has to be the, uh, the traditional white out game. Awesome. All right. And then lastly, not so much a question, but a, uh, you know, a statement. It has to be quick because we only have about three minutes left. So I'm going to ask our reps if you give a, a, quick little, a quick little answer here. But give us an interesting or a fun fact about your school. Again, we will start up with St. John's College. Uh, just that our Annapolis campus is the third oldest college campus in the United States. Awesome. Next, Cleveland State University. Uh, our fun, one of our fun facts about CSU is we've actually had multiple um, movies be filmed on our campus since we're right downtown. Um, so Captain America and Fast and Furious have been filmed on our campus. So really exciting stuff for um, our film majors too. Great. Drexel University. Two of my favorite movies. Um, our fun fact here at Drexel is that our mascot is a dragon. Um, we're one of the only colleges who are who has a ferocious mascot such as the dragon um, and our dragon is named after one of our alumni um, his name is Mario the Magnificent and Mario passed away but he came for 26 seasons to every single men's and women's basketball team so our dragon faces the basketball court so that he can watch over our basketball team um, in his life now oh that's such a great story too um <laughs> My story would be um, the makers of Ben and Jerry ice cream actually learned how to make their ice cream through a correspondent course um, through our creamery here at Penn State. Um, so that's our, our big to do here. Uh, ben and Jerry learned how to make ice cream here. Awesome. Lots of interesting facts there and a lot of great just general info at the end. So uh, that's all the time we do have. I want to thank everyone for joining us, our attendees, as well as our panelists taking the time out of their busy schedules this time of year to chat uh, with our uh, students. So thank you for that. Um, to our attendees, after you close out of your window here, there'll be a quick four question survey that will appear. Um, if you wouldn't mind filling that out, we'd really appreciate it. We're always looking to improve our events and that survey is a big factor in doing so. Um, I do want to remind you to sign up for more sessions. We have a couple more hours of this fair. Um, so if you go to the website you see there, strivescan.com slash Michigan, you can sign up for a couple more sessions if you're interested. And recordings for this session, as well as all sessions, will be available at that same website, strivescan.com slash Michigan. So like I said, that is all the time we have for today. Thank you to everyone who attended um, and enjoyed the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye, everyone.